Okay, greetings everyone. In this lesson, you will be shown how to draw an ellipse using the concentric circle method. Now, the first thing that we'll do before we even start is we're going to set up our units. So, we're going to start off by typing units. I'm going to draw using millimeters. The precision will be zero. I'm going to also set up my drawing limits by using the limits command. Lower left hand corner will be 0, comma 0. The upper right hand corner will be something in the vicinity of a thousand, comma a thousand. Okay, so let's begin. The dimensions of the ellipse are as follows the major axis will be 120 while the minor axis will be 80. So I'm going to go ahead by selecting the line command to draw, or the circle command rather, to draw a circle where the measurement or the radius of this circle will be half the major axis or the diameter will be the major axis. But I'm working with the radius, so that will be 60 millimeters. So let's zoom out a bit and let's reposition this circle by clicking on the circle, dragging the center. So that's the major axis. I'm going to click on the circle command again and I'm going to hover around the circle to find the, the center point. You know, if you're not seeing the center point, you have to use the O snap command, right clicking on the O snap command, ensuring that the center point is activated. By default, it should be. So I'm going to click on the center and I'm going to type, I think I should type 40 because the minor axis is 80. So I'm working with the, the diameter of each circle representing the major and minor axis. So the diameter of this circle is 120, the diameter of this circle is 80. Alright, the next thing that I'm going to do is this. I'm going to set the angle to 30 degrees. It's already set. I'm just right clicking the O track. Or O, o um, let me tell you what this name of this command is the polar tracking command or function. I'm clicking on the 30 degrees. By default, yours would have been on 90. And you can just change it to 30. So you're going to now go ahead and click on the line command to ensure that you're drawing a line. You're going to click from the center, drawing an horizontal line. You can now draw lines in increments of 30 because we're um, dividing the circle in equal parts. I'm going to do it for the the quarter. The reason why I'm doing it for the quarter, you have a number of options in dividing the entire circle. You can now extend these lines and then mirror them. Um, I should do it for the half rather, based on the method that I'm going to use. I could have mirrored it twice, but I want to draw as little lines as possible. So once you have split up half of the, the circle in increments of 30, you're going to use the extend command. So I'm going to select the extend command by clicking on it, and I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to click on each line, and I'm going to extend each line until they have extended all the way. Alright, I'm going to delete one of these lines because what I should have done is I should have just extended one. Alright. Alright, so you have some points here. Uh, you have these points on the major axis and you have these points on the minor axis. Well, meaning on the circle that represents the minor axis. I am going to go ahead and number the points just for your sake. Um, this point, I will call it. Let me see. I'll call it. I'm going to call it point zero. All 
So I'll call this point point one. This point will be point two. So I'm going to just copy. And just click as I go along. I'm going to edit the numbers later. And you really don't have to number the ellipse, the points. I am just doing this so that you are able to follow the points as I connect the points. It might take a little while, but bear with me. This is supposed to be five. So I'm almost there. All right, so both points are labeled. I have to also label these points and again bear with me I'm going to turn off O snap so that it, it doesn't select a point that I doesn't want I'm just basically copying and pasting the numbers turn off O snap copy Control C paste Control V, select Control C, copy, paste, Control V. So I don't have to retype the numbers. All right, so this is the last point now. And after I've done so, I'm going to tell you what I'm, I'm going to do next. Let me just move these points down a bit. All right, so the points will correspond with each other. I'm going to select the line command. Now, the points on the outside circle will be pulled down or up. So if they are above the, the central horizontal line, they will be pulled down. If they are above, if they are below the central horizontal line, they will be pulled up. Likewise, the points on the inside circle, if they are to the right, they will be pulled to the right. If they are to the left, they are going to be pulled to the left. So the aim is you're going to pull the points so that they meet. So Point one, for example, let me turn back on old snap. Point one, for example, will be pulled down and it should intersect with point one that is going to be pulled across. Please ensure that they are pulled in the correct direction. You can now switch from polar tracking to ortho if you like, because what this will do is ensure that your point, your line is straight to the it doesn't matter where I shift the compass, it won't shift until I've positioned it into another direction. So you can use ortho and you can connect the points. Alright, sometimes it gives that issue, so I'll just go back to this. It depends on what you have on in terms of the old snap. So I like to use I like to use the, the polar tracking as opposed to ortho. Also, also gives you 90 degrees 
if you notice that this side I'm pulling the point up the outside points I'm still on the right side so I'm bringing the inside points to the right and the I'm down now so I'm pulling the points up you can do a bit of trimming you should know how to use the trim command by now um, I'm going to pull up then across then up then across then across then down then across so the internal points move horizontally to the left or to the right the external points move vertically either up or down so please bear that in mind you will also notice that I have not yet um, used points 0, 3, 6, and 9. Since you are drawing an ellipse, these points will be considered a part of the ellipse. So 0 and 6 is a part of the, it, it's the distance between the internal, um, sorry, the minor axis, while from 9 to 3 is the distance between the external axis. This line is 120, while from point 0 to point 6 is 80 that's the length of the minor axis so you will now select this line this spline command and you will start from the 9 and you'll click here then here then at this zero point then this point where the one at the ones meet this point where the twos meet this point for three this point for four sorry this point for four my bad five then this point on the internal or the minor axis then six seven eight back at nine now in order for it to be accurate I normally go around a few steps go back to ten go back to eleven then to twelve and then I press enter so now I'm going to trim off this first one So that the curve remains all right and that's it I think I need to trim another one pick the one inside again zoom in uh, I think I've trimmed the wrong one I think it's the one on the outside then you trim and then you can leave it there may have trimmed the wrong one yes so this is the ellipse using the concentric circle method and by concentric circle method I'm simply using two concentric circles to get the ellipse and by the way the ellipse should be brightened so you're going to create a new layer and call it outline um, then you can change the line thickness to about 50 and then you select the line and you select the layer and you turn on line weight and there you have it this is an ellipse, an ellipse using the concentric circle method I hope you grasped the concepts that were taught in this list and the steps and have a good day.